Hello class, this is Precalculus lecture for section 1.3 from the Forrester textbook. We are talking about dilations and transformations, but there's a question that I want to ask you first. Does order matter? Think about that for a second. When, uh, when I was in seminary and I was studying ancient Near Eastern cultures, other civilizations that lived around the same time as the Old Testament peoples, the Kingdom of Israel, there was a phenomenon of sacrifice in all of these. We are kind of weirded out today by animal sacrifice, but it was common in the ancient Near East. The difference between Israel's practice as prescribed in the Bible and everyone else's practice is that everyone else put their hands on, uh, no, excuse me, they sacrifice the animal first and then they put their hands on it versus the Israelites as described in Leviticus chapter one, your favorite chapter in the Bible, always uh, put their hand on the animal and then sacrificed it as their substitute. The, the order matters enormously. The Israelites, the people of God, were saying, I identify with this animal. This is my representative. This is me. This is what is going to happen to me because of my sinfulness. <coughs> and, then, and then yet the animal went up like a pleasing aroma to the Lord, acceptable to him, which is then continues to be my representative, my sacrifice, my stand-in, versus the heathen nations all around said, I took its life, I am the master over life and death. See that dead animal, I did that, I'm in charge here. So very, very different points of view, uh, just by a simple order of when do you put your hand on the animal. In our day and age, you can make a similarly powerful statement by reaffirming the biblical order of sex and marriage. When you say, this is not about me and my needs, this is not about my desires being satisfied uh, first and foremost, this is about love, this is about self-sacrifice, this is about me making a promise and creating a safe place for this other person for the rest of our lives for us to have marital relations in a way that is based on promise and safety and assurance and covenant first radically countercultural move that is about order mattering. And the same thing we find with functions in math, that order matters. These things that we're going to do about stretching and moving functions left and right and up and down and stretching them left and right and up and down, order matters enormously. There are some situations order doesn't matter. If you want to eat your dessert first, that's cool. But the order of operations matters a lot in math. This is my special creation here. Actually, Mr. Moeller invented this, but he is my little friend. Uh, everybody say hello to my little friend. This guy is a very, very useful function because it is radically not symmetrical. The left half doesn't look like the right, the top not like the bottom, all these kinds of things. and it has a very limited domain. It only goes on for a certain place to a certain place and the same with the up and down. So that's gonna be very helpful for us as we start moving things around and messing with stuff. Now, here's that same function again, but just presented numerically. So I need to be able to cut back and forth between the picture here and the numerical data there. I want to be able to ask you, what is the domain and range of this function? So maybe you're somebody who likes to look at the graph, maybe you like to look at the numerical data, and you can see either way, whether you're looking at the graph or the, the table, the x's go from negative 2 to 4, from negative 2 inclusive to positive 4 inclusive, and the y's go from negative one down there to a two up there. Now that one gets a lot harder to see on the table. Maybe that one's a good candidate for the picture. 
But again, negative 1 inclusive to positive 2. So that's the domain and the range of the function as given. Now, what would it mean if we graphed this uh, with a 3 outside the f of x? So what, what are we saying when we, when we write that 3 out there? We're saying on the y's, graph f of x, but do it in a particular order. Find f of x, and then take all those points and multiply them by 3 after you have found those y values. So if we look at our table here again, we can see we're going to find these given x's. We're just going to plug in that independent variable. We're going to calculate f of x. But then before we graph it, we're going to take this whole column and we're going to multiply every single thing in that column by 3. So 0, uh, positive 3, negative 3, positive 6, positive 6. And I've got a graphic here that shows you what that looks like. Here's a picture of that graph. Now, when you see the graph, maybe that'll help you then to express verbally, to put into ordinary language, what has happened. Well, it's been stretched out, dilated, is Forrester's word for that. It's been dilated three times in the vertical direction. What's happened to our uh, domain? Well, we haven't changed what's uh, happening with x. That's stayed the same. But we can see that our y values now go from negative 3 all the way up to positive 6. So that's, that's something that's different. It's, it's, we would say in ordinary language it's 3 times taller. And we could put that in more mathematical, precise terminology and say that there's been a vertical dilation by 3. It's a fancy way of saying it's 3 times taller. What if we do this same procedure, but instead of using the number 3, we use the number 1 half? Well, again, we've got our uh, set of data here, but instead of multiplying by 3 at the end, we're going to just simply multiply by half after we calculate f of x. So 0 times half is 0, 1 times half is 1, negative is negative half, 2 is 1, 2 is 1. There's all the numbers. Each one of the f of x has been multiplied by half. What does that do for us graphically? Well, if you plot those points, I've got a graphic right here that shows you what has happened now to our y values. They've changed, but our x values again have not. So again, the domain is going to be the same, but now the range only goes down to negative 1 half and only up to 1. So this messing with the number, putting a number on the outside next to the f of x has changed our range in each case. Everything is proceeding as I have foreseen. <laughs> Now, let's try something different. Let's try multiplying by 2 on the inside. You've got to think about what this means. English is a language that we read uh, right to left. Hebrew, uh, or left to right, excuse me. Hebrew is read right to left. Math is read inside to outside, right? That if you had some expression like, x plus 2 times 2 plus 3 divided by 4, you, and then somebody gave you a particular x value to plug in, you would start in the middle, and then you'd add 2, and then you'd multiply by 2, and then you'd add 3, and then you'd divide. You work your way from inside to outside. Very different from human regular languages. This same thing applies here now. In this case, we need to work our way from the inside. So what this is saying is pick an x. Sure, it's an independent variable. You can do what you want with it. But after you've picked an x, multiply it by 2 and then plug it into the function. Okay? This is going to make for some very different results. So if we look at our table of values again, we're not going to be calculating f of x based off of 
those. So maybe, maybe I shouldn't cross it out. Maybe I should just put a highlighter there and kind of bury it under a couple, couple of layers of highlighting. Because what we're saying now is, sure, you can pick your x's, but you've got to multiply them by 2 and then use that to calculate f of 2x. Okay, so I'm going to start in the middle just to try to make it easier here. If I pick a 0, nothing magical happens. 2 times 0 is 0, and we know that f of uh, 0 is, so let me, let me write that down, f of 0 is negative 1. I picked 0, but times 0 by anything is still 0. Watch what happens if I pick 1. If I pick 1, 2 times 1 is 2. So we're no longer plugging in 1 into the function. We're plugging in 2. Even though I started at 1, it got multiplied by 2 before I plugged it in. We're up at that plateau on the graph, and that makes a value of 2. That was a little bit weird. Now here comes a even weirder one. If I plug in negative 1, then along comes this 2 multiplier, turns it into negative 2, and f of negative 2 is 0. Radically different point. And then here comes the weirdest one of all. If I plug in 4, the 2 turns that into an 8. f of 8 is not part of our original scheme. The original function, I can't ask that function, what do you do with an 8? It had no output. It is undefined when you plug in 8. Same thing when I try to plug in negative 2. It gets turned into negative 4. f of negative 4 is outside the ability of this function to handle, and it cannot do anything with that. So this is, this is pretty weird. This is pretty different from putting a number on the outside. Putting a number on the inside leads to a very, very different picture, which you can see right here. What's happened? Graphically, what's, what's going on? There's the graph. You can see that the description here about what's uh, happened to it is that it is now half as wide. It is. Uh, half as wide, or as Forster would like for you to say, it's had a horizontal dilation of one half. Whoa. Our y values are unaffected, but our x values don't go as far. Our x values now only go, so the range is unaffected, but the, y, the x value only goes from negative 1 up to 2. Wow, that's different. Also, what would happen then if we tried to plug in uh, half x into f of x? Similar kind of thing. You can see in the graphic uh, that it's going to be twice is wide, a, a horizontal dilation of 2. And again, our domain is going to be radically different. The range is unaffected, but the domain is now going to be negative 4 to positive 8. What? What is going on here? This is, this is not what we expected. So one of the ways that we're going to need to be able to just plug in stuff and double check stuff is to have the calculator show us different uh, tips and tricks. So get out your calculator. Let's switch over to the calculator cam. Now here on the calculator camera, you can see what I'm wanting you to do is I'm wanting for you to plug in to the uh, y1. We want y1 equals square root, which comes, if you're on an 83 with its own set of parentheses, or on an 84, you're inside it. So we want to have 25 
minus x squared. And that's what we're going to use for y1. Now let's zoom standard and take a look at that. That gets us a nice half circle going from negative 5 up to 5 over to 5. Nice function there. When we want to be able to use different functions and see how putting variables, uh, putting numbers on the inside or outside of the function affects things, what we need to do is we go down to y2 and we have this, let's do 0.5, like I say here, 0.5 times, and now I want to say y of x, y1 of x. y1 is the function name, so I press vars, and I move over to y vars, and the first kind of thing, the functions, the, the functions already defined in the calculator, the functions are y1 through y10, all the different functions we have. So we want to use y1 of x. And now when I hit graph, I've got in a different color that same thing with a vertical dilation of one half. We've cut the height down by half. Okay? So this is the sort of helpful uh, ability to graph things in the calculator using functions that we can now do function style notation. It's a little bit different in the calculator, but it's still very, very helpful. So what this should let you see here, if you fiddle around with this, and we will on the next slide, is that the putting numbers on the outside, like 3f of x, we did that example, that dilates things in the vertical direction. It's what you would expect. A 3 on the outside makes it 3 times taller. So if you put in a number bigger than 1, it's going to stretch it out and make it bigger. If you put in a number less than 1, it's going to make it that fractional amount taller. So it's a, it's a compression in the, the vertical direction. Now what's maybe not as intuitive is when you do stuff on the inside. On the inside, when you multiply by a 3, that's going to dilate it in the horizontal direction. Yes, messing on the inside is, is x sort of stuff, horizontal kind of stuff. But it is totally not what you would expect. It's the opposite, at least for me, of what I would expect. If you put in a big number, that's going to make it that much thinner. And if you put in a small number, it's going to make it that much bigger. So I find that to be rather odd. So let's try this example now that we have in our calculator. Switch back to the calculator cam. Let's try some different uh, tricks and see if we can understand how this works precisely. If we say that our y2 is going to be equal to y1, so vars, y vars function y1 and of x, and we want to add 2 to that after the fact, what does that do? Graph. That takes our original semicircle and it moves it up to. So adding or multiplying on the outside affects the y's, like you would expect. That's up. What if we subtract 2? So we go back to y equals, and we say y1 of x minus 2. We graph that. It moves the entire graph down. Subtracting from our f of x, from our y values, after we calculate the y values, and then we subtract 2, moves the whole party down. What if we add 2 before the function gets a hold of the input? So what that means is we need to delete that one on the outside, and we need to say vars y vars function y1 of, the parentheses helps us make of, x plus 2. What do you think is going to happen? Positive 2 is to the right in the x direction. So it should go to the right? No, it doesn't. It moves it to the left. Doing stuff on the inside of the parentheses affects the x, and it does it in the way opposite of what you would expect. So. Now you should be in a position to be able to predict if we go to our y equals again and we say y1 of x minus 2, you should be able to predict 
we've got our original semicircle, and then we've shifted it all over to the right. So adding or multiplying in the inside is affecting the x's, but it does it in a way opposite of what you would expect. Very frustrating, I know. Now, I would like for you, in preparation for class, to read the reading analysis uh, section of the textbook, which is on page 19. And then look over the quick review questions here on page 20. As we get more into the school year, uh, things you need to remember what you know. So from the past, this is, this is not something that I'm going to require of you to write these down. But if you want to go over any of these in class, I suggest you look through those. And if you have any questions about stuff you've forgotten, let me remind you when we work on this next in class. What you need to bring with you to prove that you watched this video is from section 1.3 homework, which is on page 19 through uh, 20, we need to do, you need to do numbers one and number two, which I know have A through C, and bring that on a half sheet of paper. That is the proof that you understand this and you can use the calculator. Happy to help you with the calculator, but please practice finding vars, y vars, and using function notation in the calculator, a useful skill to have. So I thank you for your attention, and I hope you have a great day.